everyone, this is Peak Entertainment and we're back again and here now we have another video for you and as the upcoming remake is shortly due for release on Amazon on Friday the 21st of March 2024, I thought it'd be appropriate to take a look back at the original Roadhouse movie and see if it really warrants all of the love of the 80s classic that so many fans give it. So when talking about the film we go back to its original release date of May the 19th 1989 with the sadly departed Patrick Swayze in the lead role alongside Sam Elliott, Ben Gazzara, Kelly Lynch and the film was directed by Rowdy Harrington. Now Roadhouse follows the story of professional bouncer James Dalton who we see in the beginning of the film working for security in a nightclub in New York City. After hearing of his reputation and seeing him handle himself in a scuffle, businessman Frank Tillman hires Dalton to take over his club called the Double Juice which is based in Yasper, Missouri. And Dalton certainly has his hands full as the place is absolutely rife with rowdy brawlers, chaotic fights and constant anarchy. Given full control, Dalton quickly assures himself and gets the place back in shape, getting rid of all of the drug dealers, the scammers, and he eventually catches the eye of the hot blonde doctor, Elizabeth Clay. But Dalton's actions quickly catch the eye of wealthy businessman Brad Wesley, who runs the town with an iron fist, full of money, corruption, and all of his henchmen. Over the course of the story, Dalton's war against Wesley escalates, and eventually the other townspeople come under threat. As he's joined later by his friend and mentor Wade Garrett, Dalton is taken to the absolute edge as he has to do whatever it takes to finally take Wesley down. So when we look back at Roadhouse then, it's a movie that's probably as much loved as it is derided. So many perceptions around it, whether it's the glorious over the top 80s fantasy, very much in spirit to so many of the films that we love from that era, or is it again over the top in a much more silly, cheesy and cartoonish fashion? Well, to be honest, it's probably a little bit of all of those things. Now, yes, of course, when you come into the film purely for a fun, easy, entertaining piece of escapism from the best movie decade, which is, of course, the 1980s, then yes, it has everything that you could ask for. We have the dashing hero, the straightforward good versus evil story, the corrupt crime boss, all of the rock songs, the action scenes, the fights, the hot babes and all of the testosterones, the bad one-liners, Everything is there for an entertaining Friday or Saturday night watch with all of your friends just like it used to be before the internet. And the movie itself is completely self-aware, reveling in all of its tone and I can always respect a film that knows what it is and doesn't try to be something that it's not. And from that point of view, Roadhouse still remains a very rewatchable and enjoyable film as to what it was back then when it was first released. Now when you put on your more movie critique hat on, then yes, the flaws are obvious within the film it actually plods along very slowly in the beginning, meandering in terms of its overall story. And yes, it does have that very cheap, schlocky feel to it, again, as what a lot of 80s films does. We do have the dumb dialogue and some characters like Reno, for example, are very over the top and cartoonish. Dalton's character himself at times can be very inconsistent. Starting from the cool, suave, very zen-like character who's against violence to later on becoming this almost indestructible comic superhero. And those two contrasts between the character doesn't always mesh well throughout the film. And yes, it can be silly at times, a bit too flippant. Some may find all of the nudity and sex scenes a bit cringe, especially in today's climate. And it's safe to say that the upcoming remake definitely tone all of these elements down. But if we keep the movie critique sense here and look at the film a bit closely, there is actually a bit more for Edge. For all of the 80s aesthetic, the film is actually played far more serious than the fantasy that many fans paint it to be. The plot itself has very much of that western samurai concept of the lone warrior or the lone gunman brought in to defend the innocent village or city and its civilians from the dominating tyrant. And when we look at Dalton as a character, on the outside he has all of the confidence and the swagger and all of the attention from the women, but as the story goes on, we actually see that there is far more of an inner angst and regret as we learn that he's burdened with the guilt from taking somebody's life in Memphis when he was being held at gunpoint. Now it's probably better for the experience of the film that it didn't go too deep into this direction as that really would have changed the overall spirit of the story but we can't deny that there is a layer to the character that does exist and in terms of the tone the violence of the film actually gets more intense as the overall war escalates between Dalton and Wesley and we see in the second half of the film Wesley's trying to assert his grip by blowing up certain buildings and crashing car lots. We then talk of what's probably the standout scene in the film, concerning the fights between Dalton and Reno, enraged at seeing the barn being blown up, Dalton pursues Reno on his motorbike 
and the two fights at the lake and it's quite the intense choreography sequence. Quite violent and yes it comes at the right time within the story and the narrative and overall it's a very well executed sequence. And especially when Wade Garrett comes into play, we do have some brief moments of self-reflection and finding self-purpose and vengeance. Again, nothing too heavy-handed, which benefits the movie overall. And when we look at the climax where Dalton essentially becomes a Rambo or a Commando-like action hero, taking on all of these multiple villains single-handedly, the movie goes absolutely hard in terms of its tone and its violence. And if you even listen to the musical score, it sounds very Lethal Weapon-like. And it almost does feel like you're watching a different movie. But we then talk of the other main ingredient of this film, and that's of course the sadly late Patrick Swayze, who easily carries the movie with a very likeable and natural presence and charisma, something that he maintained throughout the biggest films throughout his career. And in his role as Dalton, many fans have seen it as one of the most iconic throughout his career. And whilst I wouldn't say it's the best performance of his output, he's definitely very good in a lead role. As is also the great Sam Elliott as Wade, Dalton's very much mentor and friend. Again, this is so typical of the 80s storytelling, having a hero bounce off somebody who's far more experienced, telling him where he's going wrong and trying to guide him in the right direction. And just like Swayze, Sam Elliott has this easy charm, so natural, and again, is every bit as charismatic as his co-star. And the two together have a great dynamic on screen. It's another testament to how good he is that he can have equally as much impact despite coming into the film halfway through. So when we go on to talk about the film's box office release, and no, it was a massive blockbuster, only making around 61.6 million worldwide from a 15 million dollar budget. So in one sense, I suppose it did make its money back and half of that tally, around 30 million was made in the US alone. But as with a lot of beloved 80s films, they don't tend to be massive when they're released, but their stature grows many years after they come out as back then they would gain a huge following both on VHS and later on DVD. And as mentioned before, it's regarded by many fans as a true 80s classic, hence the reason why they're making the remake now. And Roadhouse came during Patrick Swayze's successful run from the late 80s to the early 1990s, which consisted of the looks of Dirty Dancing of course, and then later on with both Ghost and also Point Break. And I've always felt that Patrick Swayze was an actor who was really on the cusp of becoming that truly dominant next movie star, very much in the same vein as what we would see in the likes of Tom Cruise, for example. He had that very easygoing presence, he had the physical capability, and of course he gained a lot of attention from the female fan base. But he really didn't pick the best movie scripts post Point Break, and I think this was deliberate as if you watch all of his previous interviews, he really didn't like the whole movie star image that surrounded him, so he rejected a lot more typical roles which is to be respected in many ways, but I do feel it did cost him in terms of his overall career and how it declined many years after that. But when we look back at Roadhouse, as I mentioned before, it's still very watchable and entertaining now. And I do think it's actually a far more serious movie than what people realize. It's not quite this throwaway, over the top cartoonish 80s caper that I think many people look to focus on. They prefer more to look at big fight scenes and all of the hot babes and the rock songs and yes that is a huge part of Roadhouse no doubt about it but I do think there was certainly an intention here to go for a much more serious edged action thriller and whilst I wouldn't put Roadhouse amongst the truly great masterpieces or the truly great action films of the 1980s I do think it still remains a very endearing and very fun overall movie that you can watch again and again and again and in many ways, that's a true sign of why so many films from the 80s were so great overall. So those are my thoughts and feelings when looking back at the first and original Roadhouse film from 1989. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any other films or movies or television series or any other topics within the pop entertainment and culture scene that you'd also like to see me cover, then drop me a suggestion with the comments and I will see if I can provide further commentary for you on those topics within the future. Please do hit like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves and I will see you very, very soon.